Yo, what's up, world? What's going on? What's going on, y'all? Back again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nine five plus four pennies. Uh huh. Okay, word <laughs> up, word up. Welcome to another edition of Everything OG. Yes, sir. But this time we decided to do something a little different. A little different. Everything read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Following the heels of our last episode with our guest Quincy King, you know, after we talk about reissues, we decided to do an episode about our favorite reissues. That's right. That's right. Because you know. Even hardcore diggers like ourselves, we must admit we have a few reissues in our collection. Very few. Very few, though. Very few. But the reasons, you know, are very valid. Sometimes, you know, you might want to um, get the reissue because you still want to hear the music. And, that, and you haven't been able to find the OG. At, so you might say, you know what? I'm going to take that old reissue for now. Listen to the music. And so hold me until I get my OG. No, I usually just go on YouTube, man, and download them. Yeah? That's what you do? That's usually because well, I, I want to hear the music on my though, if still. I, if I'm going to... Get a reissue. I might as well just get the MP3 because that's what I look at as reissue. Is just MP3 uh -huh. YouTube ish, you know. But sometimes you say you just in the heat of a moment you see something and you just be like, you know, this will be my starter copy. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't know. It's not my starter copy. Starter copies are OGs for me. But well, starter copies <laughs> I get my hands on with the well, music. But I mean, I I, I uh, like in a reissue is basically like buying a CD to me. And like I said, if you want to hear the music. Go ahead Go and snatch. YouTube. You know what I mean? No, no, no. MP3 is not going to be as good as the vinyl. Well, I mean, it shouldn't be. But uh, what's up? With some of these reissues, <laughs> the MP3 is better. But anyway, so we got a couple of reissues we want to bring to you all uh, right now on the show. That it's in our collection, and it, this is a record that we definitely um, going to get the OGs hopefully one day. But for now, everything great. What you got, Mister Building Block? First off, man, I'm going to start with. A good reissue. Uh-huh. And uh Skull Snaps. Yes. And with this re, they paid a lot of good attention to detail on it. Uh -huh. You know. They got the fold out. Yes. They got the back cover. Looks looks real. You know. <laughs> even to the label. Uh-huh. You know. However, on the reissue, when you open it up, uh -huh. the skeleton's head should be on this side, okay. right behind the main cover. On the reissue, the skeleton's head is on the opposite on the opposite end. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Here's the original, uh -huh. as you see. Bam! Wow! Interesting. So, Interesting. With the prices that this record is going for now, it just went for five hundred thirty-one dollars on eBay this past Sunday. A fifteen-dollar reissue is preferable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes we choose reissues just because the price of the OG killing me, killing me. does not warrant the cost. <laughs> killing me. Word up, word up. For you know, I mean, it's a dope drum break, and it's been on so many sample comps. Classic. You can get it on MP3 form. You can get it on whatever if you just want to hear the drum break. Uh -huh. But Word if you don't have an extra five hundred thirty-one dollars laying around, <laughs> fifteen dollars will do you good. Well, my first pick uh, from my collection that's a reissue is a record that's eluded me for years, and I don't know how because I have like the other records. Online shopping, you can have it tomorrow. That's true, but I'm in the field though. I'm a field digger. You know what I'm saying? I'm a house digger. You're a house digger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you still diggers. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this is uh, Dorothy Ashby, Ruby Yacht. And uh, it's just as dope, maybe even doper than um, Dorothy's Harp or Afro Harpin. Uh, you, you decide. But this is an incredible piece of work. And uh, it's a re show I got for like two bucks at a, at a record show. And uh, I was happy about that just, you know, because I wanted to listen to the music. But, um, Dorothy, I'm going to get you an OG form very soon, I promise you. But right now, it's rocking with that reissue on my turntable until I get it. My next reissue is Prophets of Soul, uh -huh. Gregory James edition. Yep. And it's not a hard record to find online. I'm just kind of lazy and haven't got around to buying it. And this was like 8 bucks, and I was one day had a coupon for like $5 off, so... I said, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, you know, the cut, choice cut on here is love and happiness. Ain't no sunshine. Uh -huh. And do your homework on this. Yep. 
Next in the game for me is a very sought after record um, um, in OG form. You, like you mentioned about the skull snaps, like you just went for a lot of money. This is definitely a five hundred dollar record if you ever find the OG, and that's the Turner Brothers Act One. And uh, so this record is definitely a reissue. It's on Love and Hate Records. <laughs> if that's not a reissue label, you <laughs> then they reissued like the S O U L records as well. Uh, no, that was the, a different uh, reissue uh, label um, with the with the little little, little guy's little face, face on there. Yeah, with the little crazy face on there. But Love and Hate did a lot of reissues too. Though. Wasn't there a guy on Instagram posting a bunch of reissues like they were OG? And, yeah. had, and then how you knew it was because he had the little face yes, on it. Yes, We won't name no names. We won't name no names on that. But, uh, this but you is, know you're wrong. <laughs> but this is a funky album right here. Definitely dope. And uh, I definitely recommend it. Um, just even getting in reissue form. If you just want to hear the, the really funky music on here. Of course, I want the OG. I'm looking for the OG, but... Gonna, it's gonna cost. It's gonna cost me. It's gonna cost me, and I don't have the kind of cash right now on me at the moment. But if I ever do uh, find this OG in the field, I'm going to be jumping up for joy. You know what I mean? What if they want a thousand? Well, I meant for cheap in the field. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a dollar, two dollar, three dollar. I'm gonna, you know, be very elated. <laughs> yeah. Don't expose your hand because they might see you too happy. Like, oh, I mismarked that one. <laughs> I, I had I heard a story uh, from the the SP Earl uh -huh. how he found uh, Stark Reality. Yeah. He found it in the field at a swap meet for uh -huh. three bucks amongst the shark of diggers. Yes, sir. And he calmly paid the three dollars, uh -huh. placed it in between a couple albums, uh -huh. took off immediately. I heard the same story. That's from, how you from, do from, it. From uh, his mouth to my face. <laughs> 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 what you got, man? Yes. For my next re. <laughs> 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 oh, <it> just <laughs> I hate the way it comes off your tongue. Yeah, the way it comes off your tongue, just sounds uh, just fraudulent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what knots on the rocks? Mm. I first got this in '96 or in the '90s, right after. Bucktown uh -huh. came out. Yep. You know, those drums. Uh -huh. I found out what it was and I bought it in New York. Now, I think uh, uh, tribe, I got to the, use them too. But they didn't use it in 96. They used it in 93. Did they use it in 93? <laughs> I'm in Night Marauders album. Oh my I, God. I forget about that album because it sucks. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, low end theory you, was you, better. You, uh, you, you speak but blasphemy, man. You I got the get record. struck down by God. I got the record <laughs> because of Smith & Wesson, in Bucktown. I love mm -hmm. the drums on there. And I found it at a record store in the village. And I don't know. When I went home a couple years after getting my records in storage, I couldn't find it, so I don't know what happened to it. Uh, I found it again uh, about maybe a year ago out here, and I bought it. This record is extremely hard to find. Very rare. That's a seven hundred dollar record, my man. Even on, I would dare say even a thousand on some levels. It's so hard to find. A lot of the Stang, Turbo, Mustang records, all platinum. All platinum. They're they're real rare. Um, and this one, you can find the first two whatnot records easily. This one, you know, good luck. And also, uh, some of the songs, this actually, this actually, one of the Rock's albums is for you hardcore diggers out there. They have said that a lot of these songs are actually on the first Whatnots album when they were not called the Whatnots. They were called Machine. Oh. So this is actually the second, not second pressing, if you will, but like, this, the, this, this, the first copy is Whatnots, but they use some of the same songs that they had already previously recorded as Machine, which yeah. that record is even more rarer than this one. <laughs> Stang. <laughs> All Platinum Turbo, they are known to recycle songs on different records. Uh -huh. So similar, I think they were worse than Motown. Very because you have, I have one record, Willie and the Magnificence. Uh -huh. One of the songs on there is on the first Mo uh, Whatnots record. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they were the backing band for the Whatnots. So uh -huh. they probably took the songs, took the Whatnots vocals off nice. and made an album out of it. Word up. Next in the game for me. Since you mentioned it already, um... Stark Reality. You know what I'm saying? Discovers Hoagie Car Carmichael's Music Shop. It's like a back cover for y'all. And basically, this reissue uh, actually came out, this particular reissue came out a couple, a couple years ago from um, from uh, Egon and them cats at Now Again Records. 
and they went ahead and impressed it up. And um, I actually got this copy from the person you spoke about, uh, from the Earl. And uh, he gave me this copy. And he had about five or six of these reissues, and then he had his OG. Mm -hmm. And um, and he told me, we talked about the story. He's like, yeah, yeah, I got the record OG from the flea market, three bucks, whatever, whatever, whatever. I was like, you know, it's not going to happen again. I was kidding with him. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, this record right here, everybody knows about it. That's a hardcore digger. It's an amazing body of work in terms of um, um, jazz fusion. Monty Stark um, is on here. He plays uh, vibes, and you got uh, John Abercrombie on guitar. And uh, this basically was a, um, a kid's uh, TV show, I believe out of Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it was a local TV show, like one of those public asset access stations. And um, they just had a, a band come in and, and play along with the, uh, with the TV show, like a soundtrack almost, kind of. I don't know why, how they thought of the idea to press up a, a record for that, <laughs> for a local access TV show, but they did, and it's funky. And, uh, you Let me know. ask you a question. Yeah. How many, was this is like three albums, right? Yeah. Is the original a double album or is it a triple album? I don't know. It's a double. Uh, yo, Gus, what you know? Double. 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 I always thought it was a triple because the yeah. reissue was a triple. But it's yeah, a, I believe it's a double album. But anyway, um, so if you see this uh, this uh, uh, Stark Reality uh, reissue for like, I don't know, it's not going to be that much money at all. Probably like 10 to 15 bucks. Go ahead and scoop it. Um, I came across... It's actually $26. Okay, well, I came across the OG of this about a month ago. And uh, my, uh, my dealer had it. And uh, he went about 900 on it. And I didn't have that kind of cash on me. I was sitting on <laughs> I was sitting on about maybe three or four hundred on me at the time, but I didn't have nine. So I was like, uh, good luck and do your thing. You know what I'm saying? He did his thing. Somebody ended up buying it. But uh have you seen this copy at record before? An OG? On the wall at Amoeba. Yeah. And uh, they it, had nine hundred on it then too. Uh-huh. Somebody bought it though? I have no idea. Yeah? Well, scoop. What you got, man? Uh my next re. <laughs> Is Wayne McGee and the Sounds of Joy. Uh -huh. Wayne McGee was a correct Canadian audit, uh, artist. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Blooper reel. Wayne McGee and the Sounds of Joy. Wayne McGee was a Canadian artist out of Toronto, I believe. Uh -huh. He was Jamaican. Right. And this album right here, if you're into drum breaks, this is a good thing to have. Fat drum break. I don't know how expensive it is, a real a, a OG copy, or how rare it is. I know if you were buying breaks in the 90s, you probably got a copy of this. Mm -hmm. I was not fortunate enough to get one. And it's a beautiful package. <laughs> you know, it's it's stiff cardboard. It's orange vinyl. Mm -hmm. And I just took the chance and, you know, I bought it. Nice little... That's a dope picture. And this is on Light in the Attic Records, mm -hmm. the reissue. Yes, sir. And, I mean, no, we don't want to shame anybody. I mean, again, everybody has different budgets and different intensity levels about their collecting. Yes, it's preferable to get the OG because normally they sound better. But sometimes you can have an OG that was original, that was pressed badly, and... In the reissue, they correct the mistakes. Well, picking up. Let me just say this real quick. And my point is, with the when I was said about the reissue that sounds better than the, the original master recording, the Japanese version of There's a God Somewhere by Andrew Warts and the Storytellers. Mm -hmm. There was a hiss during the original pressing and first run that was very prevalent on the first album. They've eliminated that hiss, and that's a common complaint. Mm -hmm. You know, and that album runs about from three to around five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and I ask myself, do I want to pay five hundred dollars for this, his? <laughs> or do I want to spend forty bucks and have a clean copy? I take the forty bucks. Where but if I find original in the field for <laughs> cheap, you're going to buy it. I'll buy it. <laughs> Where it up? Well, uh. My next re, as you say, <laughs> is, uh, yes, sir, the Lewis Connection. Sort of back cover. And uh, 
This record is a funk record out of Minneapolis back in the early 70s, or actually mid to late 70s, excuse mm -hmm. me. And um, it's really dope, um, and it's very, really, really sought after, but it's very hard to find, OG-wise. Yeah. And uh, it's just like a $500 record and up. What's and, so special um, about that one? Well, the main, the reason, one of the reasons, well, obviously the music is funky, but, but one of the main reasons why people, people want this record is because uh, it actually has a very young Prince Rogers Nelson on here that um, plays uh, uh, background vocals um, on one of the songs on here. Is that him on the front cover? No, he's not. It kind of looks like him now. But uh, it's not him on the front cover, but he is on this album doing background vocals on a song called Got To Be Something. Mm. And, uh, and you see his name right there, Prince, Prince on background vocals. Background. And uh, this is way before he was discovered um, and blew up to be the famous person that he is, or was, rest in peace to Prince. But uh, this is a reissue that came out um, a few years back, and I saw it for, like, super cheap, and I had to pick it up because I really wanted to hear the music on here, and I was like, you know what? I just i am not probably going to find this OG anytime soon, so I'll go ahead and scoop this reissue up. And I'm glad I did because the music is incredible. Real, real um, dope, funky music on here, and a fat drum break also. So I definitely recommend this reissue if you see it. Of course, pick up the OG if you ever find it, but... Uh, most likely, like he just said, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. So uh, get ready to, um, you know, write that check. <laughs> <laughs> what you got next, Mr. B-Dub? I have Time and Place by uh, Lee Moses. Yes. And this is on uh, a Future Days recording of <laughs> Doing Business with Light in the Attic. Again, another Light in the Attic pressing mm -hmm. and i must say they do a good job they do a good Work. job man it's, it's stiff it feels sturdy mm -hmm. you know the disc sounds good the presentation is good mm -hmm. and i have the 45 for um time and place mm -hmm. but i've always wanted the album because he has a version of california dreaming on here mm -hmm. i heard on the radio one time and it just blew my mind and mm -hmm. um, this is to me the definition of soul music this album it's, it reminds me of Baby Huey. You know, wow. The, the soul, uh -huh. the melancholy, the feeling. Right, right. You know, I would place this up there with that album. Nice. As, as one of the top tier soul uh -huh. albums of the time. And this is the only album that he did. He didn't get the, the fame that he wanted. And, uh -huh. you know, he did a couple background things with Jimi Hendrix and Curtis Knight. Uh -huh. um, but... This album, dope. I would love to get an OG. Actually, if I see an OG and I have the money, I would spend the 500 or so for it. Uh -huh. You know, but this will tie me over until then. Yes. Good pick. I'm looking for that myself. Um, next up in the game for me, the Copeland Davis Group. And uh, this is a, a, a jazz record, uh, an amazing body of work. Album's called Smoldering Secrets. Um, and this reissue came out a few years back. And uh, this is another, like, if you find the OG, it's another three or four hundred dollar record. But um, uh, Morning Spring is the cut that everybody really, really gets the record for. But the whole album is dope, though. Is that a sample? I know one that I know I sampled it, but I'm pretty sure you know hip hop. You never know. But yeah, but yeah I, I haven't heard anybody sample this, but it's definitely a dope uh, record. I uh, definitely recommend it. And I'm looking for the OG, um, obviously, but um, I haven't come across it yet. I came across this at a record store for like six bucks. So I was like, you know what? I'll go scoop it up because, uh, you know, I think uh, I want to check out the music. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised. And the music is dope. Um, I believe this was a record out of, um, out of overseas when they recorded it. So I don't even, the source was hard to get. But um, if you do see it, obviously scoop it up in any form. Copeland Davis Group, Smoldering, Smoldering Secrets, very dope album. I recommend you. What you got, man? Now, my last re is a point of contention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this may cause some debate. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to bring it up. Songs of Innocence, composed and arranged by David Axelrod. Great record. The reason why I say this is a reissue is because on the back cover it says, this album... Previously released with a different cover and previous catalog number, ST2982. Mm -hmm. Songs of Innocence 
came out in 1968. This is a 1974 re. Now, I call it a second pressing. But... Second pressing is still a reissue. No, no, no. Second pressing is more so when you have a first run, and then exactly. the next year they run out. Of the, yeah. They make it. This was six years later. <laughs> they ran yeah, out because the album was hot. So they yeah, did another, 1960, run, another run. Yeah, but they did that. That's 1968. They would have did another run in 1969. They ain't going to have that many records that last to 74. Ah. He just, <laughs> he don't want to admit it's a reissue. <laughs> I mean, I, again, I would love to have the other cover. And say yes, I have a, 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 a OG, but this is a well. I have the OG, an acceptable so OG for me. It, 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 it makes no difference to me. It's either near, either here nor there to me. I have the OG, but uh, you know, I just thought that was a second pressing. But you know, it's up for debate. Y'all go ahead and uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my last piece right here is going to be this right here reissue. Um, this is Apocento Alto. And uh, the album's called uh, uh, Goodly Old Friends. And I don't know much about the record in terms of, like, the origin of it, but I know it's got a fat drum break on here called um, Te Amo. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a actually famous song, Te Amo, but... What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> it means I, I love you, My think. Spanish is very uh, limited, man. I, I, after seventh grade, I stopped taking Spanish. <laughs> I think it means I, I love you. Okay, well... It's the, an Oakland record. So Oakland record, okay. It's out of Oakland. Uh, thank you. And um, the song Tehama got a fat drum break though mm. in the middle of the song, and it's crazy. And from what I'm told, this is like a um, another record like goes like before or like before 400 and up. Um, I've never seen the OG, so um, I would love to see the OG and, and scoop it up if I could afford it. But until I get the OG or see the OG, I got to reissue to keep me comfy and keep me cozy until I see it. You know what I mean? So sure. it's definitely dope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this concludes everything re. <laughs> and I uh, hope you guys out there um, are having a great time digging. And, and thank you for so much for checking out the show, Everything OG. Everybody subscribing. We really appreciate it. We do. And this will probably be the last and only episode of Everything Re. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more reissues. No more reissues. Is... I think these are all the reissues we have in our collection. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. So... True diggers know. <laughs> yeah, word up, word up. So, thanks a lot for tuning in. My name is Demon the Digger. I'm Building Block, Mr. B Dub. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Everything OG. But this time, it's Everything Re. That's right, that's right. It's your boy Demon the Digger. What's up, man? I just wanted to introduce you. What's up, world? I'm D Double. Uh-huh. This is everything free. I mean, OG. No, 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 no. <laughs> Stevie the Digger, y'all. What up? What distinguishes this from the reissue is the reissue the skeleton is facing to the. When you open it on the original, the skeleton. Oh, I'm sorry. Alright, when you open the record up, the skeleton's head is at this end. That. You could also do that like in edit.